I have to admit, this one surprised me a bit. I really thought I was gonna come in here with an easy video where we'd all have a little fun as I pick this thing apart for being another overpriced, poorly executed piece of equipment in the smart home gym space. Now, don't worry, we'll still pick on them some, but here's the thing, it actually works pretty well. The Unitree Pump is a tiny portable functional trainer that does a good job of accepting its limitations and not overreaching. It delivers on many of its promises, making the theme of this video that it worked much better than I expected. It's not perfect. There's some software tweaks that could be easily made. I'm not sure how it's gonna hold up after years of use. And I ran into some other issues that I'll point out as we go along, but for what's essentially a well-priced four inch by two inch cube, weighing about one and a half pounds, <laughs> Well, at least it's durable. What was I saying? It performs pretty well for its size, but they admit it's not designed to take the place of a commercial or home gym. It's when you don't have access to those things, like when you're traveling, for example. Honestly, a company that isn't trying to oversell their product is refreshing. And the best part about this thing, no subscriptions. Once you buy it, it's yours forever. No restrictions. And I say that having no affiliation with Unitree. So whether you buy it or not doesn't help me in any way, which is actually what makes making this video so difficult. Because with a good build quality and smoothly applied resistance, it allows for a good workout in a small package which means I could have made some money off this thing, but don't feel too bad for me because when Unitree reached out to me to review this thing, I made sure to milk it for everything it was worth and had them send me everything they made. <laughs> oh my God. Not the rower, not the rower. <laughs> and since it was free and you guys know me, I really tried to break this thing by constantly maxing it out and testing its limitations. So let's quickly cover what comes with the pump and then we'll go over all these add-ons and whether they're all worth it and most importantly, how well it all works. Let me just organize this all first real quick. The base unit itself is the pump, which is really just a little box with a smart motor inside of it that's capable of delivering 4.4 to 44 pounds of resistance. Though, as we'll see later, you can actually combine the pumps to create even more resistance, and they're controlled with an app that runs on any Apple or Android device as long as it's got Bluetooth, and that app shows your times in real stats. Shows your stats in real time. Things like calories burned, distance pulled, reps, kind of your standard smart gym stuff. It also records all of that so you can check your progress over time. There's a built-in game and leveling trophy and ranking system that all seem to be in their infancy, but once flushed out more could provide some people with more motivation to work out. But back to what comes with it. You've got this handle with the cutest little carabiner you'll ever see. Aww. It doesn't look like much, but it actually works fairly well. There's also an ankle cuff, which I'm sure a lot of my viewers are pretty familiar with, that's oddly well made. You've also got a storage bag, charging cable, and two anchors, one that can be used in a doorway or wherever you can jam it into. You've also got this strap that can go on your feet, uh, swing set, I don't know, but remember in our last video where I said with the preacher pad, you could curl wherever you want with that thing? Well, this one takes it to another level. This is a prototype version. The actual launch version will include more items like it shows you on the side of the box and they've made some changes to it which we'll talk about as we go along. This one was actually sent so early in development that they didn't even include instructions yet but it was still pretty easy to set up and start up. You just rip it like a freaking chainsaw. Maybe not that dramatically. But it's easy. Pull the cable to turn it on and connect it to whatever device you're using. The first time you use it, you do have to quickly set it up, but it's straightforward to pair the pump to the app and the app itself is very easy to navigate. There's a few ways to use it and I'm gonna say this is round one of me being a little critical with this thing, but at the same time, I will say that most of my complaints could easily be fixed in the software and very well may have already been by the time the launch version is out. Let's start with plan mode where they've already got a few workout plans in there which you can customize or create your own, but this early on, there's not a ton there yet. But they do have all the classics like Bubble Butt Challenge, which clearly the model hasn't completed yet, or maybe she's the beginner level and Winnie's advanced? 
There's get rid of flabby arms and 11 line abs, which is where having a female perspective on this channel is an advantage because I had no idea what that meant. And while I ran through a few of them and found them to be okay, they left a little to be desired. So if you're looking for something to guide you through your workouts, to be honest, I'm not sure any tech does an exceptional job at that yet, but again, this is an early prototype. If I had to pick on them, well, besides what I just said, I don't like how in plan mode, when you adjust the resistance, how it shows you the base number and then a percent. I don't want to do the math on a 134.6% of 11 pounds. I can't even handle plate math sometimes. It should just show you the actual weight like it does in free train mode. They could also do a better job with the audio and visual feedback in that mode. It beeps when you're on your last few reps, but not actually on the final rep. So since I'm often too busy checking myself out in the mirror rather than staring at the app, I'll do a couple extra reps. Now with curls, it's not a big deal, but with squats, I don't want to do an extra rep ever. The app does have a green progress bar that's easy to see and helps you check your progress, but the rep count text is friggin' tiny and bordering on useless on a phone. It's probably more nitpicking than anything else because I've counted my own reps for years, but it's still a silly omission. I suppose that's enough complaints for now. Let's get back to what it does well. It's easy to adjust the resistance at any point in time just by pausing it. And the app remembers your numbers for next time and those numbers are unique to each exercise. So if you're maxing it out on curls, which if you watch this channel, I know you are, it won't max you out on front delt raises, for example. In general, setting it up for an exercise is pretty straightforward and simple. And after you've done it a few times, it doesn't take a whole lot of thought, but there is a bit of a learning curve. And yes, I do realize the irony of me demonstrating half of these on one of the most over-the-top power rack setups out there. I mostly found myself in free training mode where you do whatever you want and can easily adjust the resistance and swap modes through the app. Speaking of modes, there's three ways to tweak the resistance at the moment, but they're adding a few more with chains mode where the resistance would peak the further you are out in your range of motion. There's gonna be a concentric mode where it's harder on the way out than it is on the way in. They've already got eccentric mode, that's the opposite. It's harder on the way in than out. Uh, there's constant mode, that's your default. Resistance is always the same. And there's a generation mode where you can charge the pump by using it. Or you can even use it to reverse charge your phone. Now, I didn't really play around with the generation mode much, but the mental image of somebody frantically yanking on this thing for hours during a power outage so they can send some text is hilarious. And it's cool to see them squeeze every bit of functionality they can out of this device. I genuinely enjoyed using this. It was well packaged and the fit and finish really caught me off guard. It's much higher quality than I expected and they clearly have some experience with this type of stuff because the motion it produces is surprisingly smooth, which is something I've harped on in the past with other smart home gym tech, like in the prototype unit we were sent in our Speedience review. That's probably because they're a robotics company and in retrospect, I should have asked them to send me one of their robotic dogs as payment, so this could have been me. Overall, a lot of exercises worked really well with it as long as you treat it like a functional trainer. What I mean by that is things like standing curls, flies, all kinds of delt work, one arm tricep push downs, and a lot of other exercises felt really good. Hell, you could even do lying leg curls and relive your days as a teenage girl on the phone. And yes, boys, I'm talking to you too. Of course, there are others where they maybe tried a little too hard to come up with motions like with cable squat where the angle doesn't really work and you can't really get the full range of motion. And with deadlift, it has similar issues. But remember, you can anchor this thing to a lot of stuff. So you may be able to make it work if you're really creative. Actually, the range of motion was an issue with a few exercises because with a cable length of just over four and a half feet, for certain movements, I had to really position myself well to make them work. So wood choppers or pull throughs, for example. Nothing was a deal breaker. Just realize you'll have to be a little innovative and thoughtful depending on what you're attempting to accomplish. Where you may run into issues if you only have one of these is in total resistance. 44 pounds is good for certain exercises, but for others like rows, you may be wishing for more. Luckily, you can link multiple of them together. They say eight, which I'd love to see what kind of crazy octopus stuff people come up with, but I think for most people, two would be ideal because they'll open up more movements regardless of whether you get their add-ons, which I'm not really as excited about. 
I'm not sure how you're actually supposed to physically link them because I didn't read the digital directions they sent me and that's because I spent more time trying to figure out how to get my real attachments onto this thing. So imagine my excitement when I got my Rogue handles and every other attachment I have to work with it. Probably my greatest accomplishment ever. I mean, yeah, maybe except my kids. But once joined, syncing them in the app is super simple. The option is there every time you adjust the resistance. And they still worked really well and provided a combined smooth motion. They can be a little awkward to both set up in a doorway, for example, but we were able to figure it out without much effort. All right, let's talk a little bit about the optional accessories you can buy with this thing, which we have all of right here. And I will say, it's not that they're bad accessories. They all work fairly well and add more versatility to what it can do. But this is where I feel like they get a little bit away from their strength, which is in portability and into the home gym space. There's the suction cup and barbell, which is actually three pieces, but you can leave the middle piece out if it's too much length for you to handle. And when you put it together, you'll feel like a friggin' ninja turtle. Oh yeah. Admittedly, I don't entirely trust these suction cups, even if they are just the prototype versions, which max out at 40 kilograms of resistance each. I mean, I guess the final version is supposed to suck better, which I think we're all excited about. And they are still fairly portable, and they do work and add more movements to your repertoire, but to me, the real power of this thing is as a tiny mobile cable machine. Then you've got the rower, which folds out and up easily, so it fits the theme of compact and easily stored away. And I really didn't have high expectations for it because of how light it is, but once again, it does work. It's probably not going to blow you away in build quality, and I'm not entirely sure I'd want to attempt maxing it out with four pumps, but I haven't broken anything yet, and believe me, I've been trying. There's also the power rack, which is essentially two metal channels that you attach to your wall, and then it's got this attachment point that runs up and down it, so you can set your pumps to whatever height you want. It works, and it's a decent minimalist setup, but tightening the adjustment can be a little clunky once it's mounted. Price-wise, I think the pump base package is a pretty good deal off Kickstarter at $159. Actually, all of the Kickstarter packages seem to be logically set, and it would be hard to get too upset about any of them at their current prices. If you want to learn more about this thing or see their other models' charismatic faces, feel free to check out the links in the description. They can make some subtle tweaks in the software to improve it, and it can be a little bit clunky to set up at times, but overall, I'm impressed. It consistently provided a smooth resistance. It's simple enough to use and figure out. It's effective if you're using it like a functional trainer. And if you're traveling a lot, I really think it's a pretty cool device. If you enjoyed this review, check out this smart home gym right here. It's a pretty entertaining watch. Like, comment, and subscribe to boost us on that algorithm. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.